Hey, peace world. Thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind sports and entertainment video. Gonna get into the shy. Um, I wanted to use this gimbal that I bought a while ago. Don't use it a whole lot, but because uh, it doesn't work properly. But I did want to get to it. I mean, I did want to try to get my money's worth out of it. Um, the shy. So this, I, I, now this is a little rough version. I really don't have all of the uh, the normal detail that I try to include. The title name of the episode. This is episode three of season three. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how I wanna what I wanna go here. How where I, how I wanna attack this. Um, one thing that I see couple of things I guess um this might be my last update to be honest um I just think the show is messy I, I don't think it's a good show and my wife <laughs> she already tapped out she's she's she already tapped out and uh, I could. She was listening to. She was just listening to the TV in the other room while I was watching it this morning in the bedroom. And I'm hearing her reactions to the move to the show as it's going on. And I'm sitting here like, ah, this. It's hard to justify most of this stuff and and, and the, the lack of detail and and how things are executed, how the story is moved along, so on and so forth. Now I say this. In defense, um, I'm a I've been rocking with Yellowstone the last couple of years on Paramount, starring uh, Kevin Costner. I just saw the second episode of this season, the, the current season, season three, I believe. It's kind of trash right now too. It's, it's it seems like it's lost its way quite a bit, and we're spending a lot of time in uh, ground we've already covered with the daughter Beth and what's going on with Rip. And then this love story with the with the with Casey and his Native American wife, Kevin Costner sitting up, grunting with everything that he says. I I digress. The shy. Um. On one hand, I'm trying to sit here and see that one thing that I because Ronnie, I, I I keep saying this man, Ronnie is not worth me to it's not Ronnie is not worth me tuning into the show this man has struggled to get onto his as an adult has struggled to get on his feet to do anything um and now the brother is collecting bottles and recyclable materials and whatnot to get some type of to earn some kind of money and I'm sitting here on one hand I'm trying to look at it like well maybe the the writers and the creative team is trying to tell us that it's trying to illustrate for us the lack of opportunity in Chicago, the lack of opportunity for anybody to do to earn some, de you know, a living wage or to earn or gain decent employment. And I can understand that. And that's that's a large part of uh, these types of problems that they're the, the, the plight and the struggle that they're trying to show on the show. Um, so on one hand, I'm trying to think that maybe that's what they're trying to show us, but um, it's um, like it's it, everybody on the the entire show is struggling. We see Ronnie getting his ass whipped by this group of of, of kids. Uh, okay, so so I'm tr I was trying to justify it as that you know they're trying to show us that uh, economically. Stuff is bad, and that's part of the reason why Ronnie is struggling to be, uh, <clears throat> you know, to, to, to do anything, to, to be a productive citizen. Yeah. Or, you know, he, he's, a, he's just a horrible character to follow here. So then, okay, we got that going on. I told you this before. Uh, the one thing that I was trying to give some credit was... Emmett in this business. And again, here's just a, a glaring weakness for me um, in, in, in handling the story and storytelling and the writing. Why would Dominique have gone along with 
with Emmett's plan to begin with, to go over here and struggle in Sonny's after hours. If it's after hours, how was this kid's basketball team one of the customers that's, that they just got back from some game? Why is why is this team full of kids in this in this coaching there? Now I get it if they drove back from a something in Indiana or whatever. I, I guess I can halfway get it, but it's attention to detail. But Dominique was already successful with what she was doing in her uh, in her setup. It seemed like the smarter thing would have been. But I get I, I get it, I guess, to show Emmett's resourcefulness and his 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 dedication to the hustle and grind is he's going to solve this problem and bring in some help, uh, you know, to to back up um, Dominique in the kitchen. OK, but um, again, this is just kind of how failed Emmett's character is and why you probably should have just killed off Brandon altogether. Like his his catering business, his his food truck and all of that was a great thing and, and his his love for cooking and the culinary arts. But but with him gone, it, it's 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 a wrap. Kill that off. Um but like I said, I, I, I guess that's that that just was a weakness in the story in that turn in the story. Um So then we have Tiff and Emmett arguing. And, and and that's the thing. Out of the blue, they're homeless. To start to show off, they need to go and convince mom, uh, Jada, that they need to live somewhere. How did things turn? She's selling weed. He's doing what he's doing. How did things get that bad since the last time that we saw them? Like, who has that type of swing in the script? Okay, um, I know I'm all over the place a little bit, but the show is all over the place. Um, let's get to uh, Trig and, um, and, 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 and Imani and them getting involved with trying to find Keisha. Um, this is when your, writing, your, your writers don't know the material that they're trying to cover. It's just completely unbelievable that Trig and his partner, his his woman, Imani, they just walk up to this trap house. The dude that's running the trap house comes to the door and they, they put guns on him. And then in, in a few minutes, they have half a dozen or so individuals, thugs, gangsters, killers. They have them in bands, zip ties. And they're interrogating them. They're, and he says, we're on a mission. You know, this is our mission, is what he says to Imani. Stick, stay focused. We're on this mission. What, what is this? How does, how does that work? And it, 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 that's been my issue with a lot of this stuff is when, when different writers, even on Power, when they're trying to cover the street involved, the street angles of the story, and you just conveniently make, the ops completely incompetent to just move the show around. So I, 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 I'm sitting here re really ready to shut this episode down when I watch that. But but I, I'll get to this. So then we get to the latest and greatest with Dre and Nina, Keisha and Kevin's mom. Um, we just two. We just a week or two into marital bliss into the honeymoon stage and we're already dealing with the fact that Keisha and Kevin aren't Nina's kid I mean aren't, aren't aren't Dre's kids so that's going to be an issue with this union because a single mom a single parent is always going to choose their kids over their relationship or their their partner their spouse and whatnot that's always going to be there but we got there so quickly but this this goes into where I get into the agenda of what feeling like I'm being uh, an agenda is pushed on me and we're not I'm not just watching a TV show anymore. It's like. So if you go back to the scene with them going through the house and trying to look at these girls and then if you factor in 
what's been happening with Jada. And this, this uh, Latino cat asked her to take her out. If we look at all of the relationships and what black men are doing on this show, when Imani and um, when Imani and Trig are going through this house, this trap house, this is where you see black men. This is how they interact with women. This is how they uh, are getting sexual satisfaction or you know gratification. This is how they're taking care of their sexual sex, sexual needs is to go into this house full of sex workers and pay and beat on these women who are being drugged up, held against their will, held captive and slaved out basically. That's how black that's how black men, uh, heterosexual black men are doing what they do in terms of how they get the intimacy that they need and the companionship of a woman. That's what they resort to. Like I said, Jada can't even find a black man to do anything she has to consider uh, an individual, a non-black person. And then on the other hand, everything is working out great for, for Nina because she's remarried and now, you know, is with this, with a, a lesbian woman and is, as, and, is, and is in this same sex marriage. So on the show in general, you really don't see a black male doing anything productive. I, like I said, Emmett is, is incompetent and is just struggling. He's barely swimming. He's barely a, above water. The, and so I, I'm saying all, all of this to say, man, I'm, I'm only really tuning in to kind of see what happens to Kevin. They did have... Uh, they did have Papa trying to uh, court Maisha and, and trying to be a gentleman. And and that's kind of what's, that's a microcosm of what's wrong with the show is like, we try to have these warm moments, this teaching moment that we saw between Jada, uh, Emmett, and, um, and Tiff, where she tries to intervene and, and, and uh, mediate their relationship. Um, so we saw that we saw, uh, Papa and Maisha, you know, he's holding, carrying her books and stuff. I don't even know if that happens nowadays. Like that, that seems, that seems fantasy to me at this point, <clears throat> but we know Papa is, you know, he's read his father is a, uh, is a, uh, we know that his father is, is, is a, is a preacher, a pastor and whatnot. So on and so forth. Now, speaking of his father with Ronnie, Ronnie gets beaten up and taken in by the preacher. And, you know, when he was running from the kids, or not the kids, the young men, the group of uh, thugs that were beating him up. Um, we already went through this with Ronnie. Ronnie went through the whole, we already went into his origin story last year and why he's all screwed up. Why are you taking us back to him being complete trash as a man, as a character, as an individual. Uh, I thought, like I guess I thought we did that last year. He went and visited his father or whatever and got some stuff off his chest. And we understood why he was all jacked up. Now he's back in the city and he's no good again. He's broken again. Um, and, and, and the pastor tells him that, you know, you got to forgive yourself. I thought you, I thought he forgave himself last year. So again, I, I, I just... La oh, another thing. The the black woman at the recycle recyclable station. Again, with the black with the black man, a black male figure not being some on some more ain't shitness. She's trying to sleep with a man who's homeless. <clears throat> now I ain't saying not to condemn the man and whatever, whatever, but we're not gonna try to have a a, a decent relationship. And a, a, a kind of a normal normal relationship. She just wants to give him some ass because she sees him coming here. <laughs> okay, whatever. Whatever. Uh, that that I, I gotta scratch my head. Where I guess he I guess he can go to her place. You know, and, and and do whatever, and then like I said, they 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 use comic relief 
to cover or handle or address some very situation, uh, some very complex or uh, big situations. But here, uh, like I said, this woman is is, is uh, repeatedly trying to approach this brother. What do you call it? Some um, whatever. That's that's just some tangential, tangential, gentle uh, filler time. So um. What else did we cover this episode? We saw the we saw the uh, the honeymooners. We saw them arguing, um, and then it's it's just this big thing with Trig and Imani. Like we're just we're just here to get Jake. Like where did you come from? What were you? What do you have going on that's there? And then they mentioned like Trig was setting up the house so he could have a card game or something. He's playing around with some dice like he's getting ready to get some. Nobody on the show has anything going on. I don't see no. <laughs> Except for maybe Sonny. But um, Duda, haven't seen him in two episodes. Now, and that takes me back to last year. And and now we don't, we haven't seen Cruz. I guess I can give up all hopes of Cruz and uh, two, Detective Toussaint. But you just completely going to walk away from that whole all of that time that you spent building up this investigation and this 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 rental these properties being bought up and this such and such such and such all everything that was leading to Duda and now Bruh's just uh, running for mayor that's what I was afraid of was that this thing would start acting up sorry about this um so we just dropped that. No mention of how Brandon was killed. Was Jerrica killed with him? Jerrica went missing. Like she didn't even no mention of her at the at the funeral. The only loose end that we really saw was we see that grandma wasn't dead. But now I guess we're covering another issue because grandma might be dealing with uh dementia. So, okay. A another more struggle. More, uh, you know, more hard times. And that's all they give us on this show is, is hard times. And we're supposed to tune in every week because it's black people on TV. So, and this mug is tripping. So, oh, I'm getting ready to get off of here. Um, so, that's what we're doing. And like I said, man, I think if, if, if it can't be handled any better... Uh, I might have to be out. You know, I got better I got better things to talk about, better places to spend my time. Uh I might just check in on it. Like I said, I I really and that's where I was with Power. The last season of Power, I really just wanted to see how they were going to wrap that shit up. It was messy. It was it, it had lost its way. It had jumped the shark. And I just wanted to see are they really going to make this boy let this boy kill his father? Some shit that just is, is completely unbelievable and, and just where was the where was the focus group on that to see if people are really gonna buy that? And that's where I am with this. I'm just trying to see what's gonna happen with uh with Kevin. And now, you know, do they find Keisha or not? Anyway, man, I'm out. My name is Wood. Peace. I thought it was peace. <laughs>